The Appalachian Mountains was a wild and deadly place to be during the late 1800s. One of the noted feudists was Bad Lewis or John Lewis Hall. It is thought that he participated in the Hatfield and McCoy feud. However, not enough evidence for this claim can be found. But there were plenty of feuds going on in the same area at the same time, so he could have been involved in one or more of them. It is also claimed that Hall killed 22 men. We can find newspaper articles for a couple of these events. We also will be walking through the events of his trial, conviction, and acquittal through the eyes of the newspaper articles. Also, there is a confusion on an event that took place in April of 1890 and 1893. We have newspaper documents stating that George Stanley was beaten to death by Hall and his son. We also have newspapers stating that a man named Stonsell was also beaten during this time and was killed, but the newspapers recanted this and said that he was recovering from his injuries. Because of the similarities in names, occupation, location, and time frame, there are some that think that this may be a retelling of the same event. We also have a confession made by John Bad Lewis Hall to a newspaper called The Willing Register about his side of the story. He later recants this confession before his retrial. So sit back, relax, as we tell you the tale of the life of John Bad Lewis Hall. Who was John Lewis Hall? John was born sometime between 1835 and 1838 in Jacks Creek in Floyd County, Kentucky. There are two couples that are claimed to be his parents. He was either the son of William Riley Sr., also known as Bill Hall, and Nancy Higgins Hall, or the son of Jonathan Luby Hall and Nancy Hall. Some sources have him listed as the brother to Talt and Henry Hall, and other sources have him listed as their first cousin. Lewis Hall marries four times. He would marry Rhoda Bentley Hall in Letcher County on December 3, 1853. His children with this union were Jefferson Cushing Hall, Mary Jane Hall, and Harlan Bentley Hall. They would divorce sometime during 1879 through 1880. Rhoda Bentley Hall would die sometime in 1908 at the age of 78 to 79 years old. John would go on to marry Mary Mullins sometime in 1880, and the children of their union were Kilburn Hall, Tilden Mullins Hall, Drethro Hall, and Cried Mullins Hall. They would remain married for a short time and divorce sometime between 1884 and 1885. John Lewis would marry for a third time after 1885 to Polly Anderson. The children born of Lewis and Polly's union were Malika Hall, Morgan Hall, Sadie Hall, Nickety Hall, and Dolph Hall. Polly and Lewis would later divorce and she would marry Breckenridge Brick Moore. She would give birth to William Moore, the only child of the union, in 1891. When Breck died, Polly would remarry Lewis Hall. The Newspaper Accounts of Hall's Activities It is said that he killed as many as 22 men during his time feuding. Hall makes a confession in the Willing Register, which he later recants. However, some of the men that Hall supposedly killed are listed and the reasons in this article. We will travel through those that he confessed, as well as others that were found in the newspaper articles. David Hall. This is what John Lewis had to say about what happened. This first encounter would have taken place between 1881 and 1882. Quote, As to my outlawry, I deny that I am such, and never had but two serious difficulties in my life. The first one was with David Hall in Pike County. It was 11 years ago. One afternoon during my absence, this man and several others came to my house and without cause or provocation, raised a row and fired through my door. They killed one man who was in the house. They had an imaginary grudge against me, and though all the while I was in, but upon discovering their mistake, went away. The next day they returned and all the fuss was renewed. 
I did all I could do to suppress it, but availed nothing. Dave Hall attempted to draw his revolver and shoot me, but I got mine out first and shot and killed him. For this, I was tried at Prestonsburg, Kentucky, and honorably acquitted. Unquote. The first steal. In 1889, Hall had taken an active role in the murder of a man named Steele in McDowell County. Several newspaper articles referred to this event and that Lewis was arrested for this murder. However, there is not much to be found about the trial and any further information about the steel man who was killed. The Beating of George Stanley On April 14, 1890, the Big Sandy News from Louisa, Kentucky reported that Lewis Hall and a railroad contractor named George Stanley had got into a drunken quarrel that Saturday evening. Stanley was stomped and severely beaten by Hall, who was aided by his son. Stanley would die a short time later from his injuries. There is no more information about what the fight was over or how it began. Samuel and Hiram Steele According to two newspaper articles, on May 11, 1891, Lewis Hall and his son, Lewis Hall Jr., got into an argument with Samuel Steele and his son Hiram near Knox Creek in Perryville, West Virginia. The argument turned deadly as Lewis Hall Jr. was shot through the heart and died instantly. Hiram Steele was hit with seven bullets and died a few minutes later from his wounds. Samuel Steele was mortally wounded and died a few minutes later. Lewis Hall had received four slight wounds but escaped to the mountains to recover. In the Willing Register Confession, Hall gives us a reason for this quarrel. According to Lewis, quote, all this came about accidentally. That a short while before he was in Welsh and had heard that one of his sons had been shot and killed at Press Mullins's place near Bradshaw. He and his nephew, L. H. Hall, started to get the body of the son and that night stopped over at a house where lived a girl to whom Hiram Steele had been paying attention. She favored Hall. This made Steele mad, and that was the beginning of the trouble. Hall had heard that there were two Steels lying in wait for them, and after the lapse of several days, the two Halls and Steels met as described. Early in Fussifade, L. W. Hall was shot and killed by Hiram Steele. Lewis fired, and simultaneously Sam Steele leveled his Winchester at Lewis. But he held it off while some six or eight shots were fired, unquote. He later stated, quote, When the smoke cleared away, both the Steeles and L.W. Hall were dead, unquote. The Beating of George Stansel According to the Martinsburg Independent, April 22, 1893, Lewis Hall and his sons, who were at the time lived at Davy in McDowell County, got into a drunken spree together. While they were in this state, they ran across a man named George Stansel, who was engaged in railroad business. The Halls picked a fight with Stansel and began pelting him with stones. It was reported in this paper that he had died of his injuries. However, the Willing Register on May 1, 1893, printed a retraction to the story. The retracted story now reads, quote, George Stansel was most cruelly beaten with clubs and stones by four or five persons. Said to have been led by Lewis Hall, he is still living and his chances for recovery are favorable, unquote. Lewis Hall convicted of murder. According to the newspaper sources, sometime early in 1893, the West Virginia Desperado was found guilty of murder in the first degree by McDowell County Criminal Court and sentenced to a penitentiary for life. The residents form a vigilante group. According to the Willing Register on August 1st, 1893, a few days before, on July 31st, two factions had made threats concerning the confinement of Hall. He was moved at that time to Wayne County Jail and Wayne C.H. There was a crowd of many desperate-looking men present to meet the Norfolk and Western Railroad late-night train to conduct mob vengeance. The telegraph lines were down between McDowell and Wayne C.H. that night, and no communications could get through. 
Lewis Hall gets a bail setting. The Willing Register reported on August 13, 1893, quote, Jailer Jones of Huntington brought Lewis Hall back to Welsh yesterday, bail having been granted by Judge Guthrie of Kanawha Circuit Court in the sum of $10,000. Lewis says he was most kindly treated while at the Cowboy County Jail. Lewis Hall sits in jail. According to the Willing Sunday Register on August 20, 1893, in Huntington, West Virginia, the Hall was fighting for a new trial on the murder charge. He was moved to this new jail for safekeeping. His application for a new trial was accepted, and a new hearing would begin on October 12, 1893, at McDowell. Hall was moved because there were threats made to his person, and it was thought that it would be prudent to move him as many tempers had flared up, and many people wanted to take him and exact mob justice. The Hall family had also made threats against the officers holding Hall, as they claimed that they would take him from them to make good on his escape. The newspaper goes on to state that although many strange murders had taken place in Mercer, McDowell, and counties in that region that were all blamed on Hall, he denies that he killed that many men in the newspaper, even though others say that he bragged of it. According to the Shepherdstown Register on August 18, 1893, quote, Hall boasts of killing 22 men, and he says he only desires to live long enough to remove two or three more. He is worth considerable money, is intelligent, and is very amiable unless temper is aroused, and when he is transformed into a brute, unquote. Lewis Hall faces justice in Welsh, West Virginia, on some time before October 15, 1893. According to the Willing Register, Lewis Hall and 11 others were arrested by Deputy Marshal Lindsay Vinson on the United States warrants for illegal whiskey sales. According to the Willing Register on November 3, 1893, quote, a jury has been at last secured in the Lewis Hall murder case, and evidence is being taken now, unquote. On November 24, 1893, the Clarksburg Telegram of Clarksburg, West Virginia reports that Lewis Hall, who was 60 years old at this point, was set to go to trial for the murder of Samuel Steele in McDowell County. His trial ended in acquittal. He was credited with 13 slayings at this point in his history. Lewis Hall's death. An arrest warrant was issued for Morgan Hall for running what is called a blind tiger. A blind tiger is an appellation term for a speakeasy or an illegal place to gather for drinking. Constable George Johnson acted upon the warrant on February 8, 1912. At first, Johnson and others of his party had gone to the home of Morgan Hall. There, Morgan Hall defied the detectives and refused them entry into his home without threat upon their lives. Lewis Hall grabbed his rifle and went to Miller Burke's store at Shelby Gap, Kentucky, which was nearby to confront the detectives. Johnson was in the act of reading out the warrant for the arrest of Morgan Hall when Lewis made signs that he was going to open fire as he was rushing out of his home. Before Hall was able to shoot the first volley, Johnson then opened fire and killed the 80-year-old Hall, and then turned and shot and killed Morgan Hall. The death of Lewis Hall left the people of Shelby Gap, Kentucky, very scared that there may be reprisals over his death. He was a known feudist, and it was feared that the feud would reignite in their small area. However, his passing was marked in many of the newspapers, but all remained quiet in the little area, and the fear subsided. Thoughts and Questions Lewis Hall certainly does earn his spot in our Appalachian Outlaw series, but we are still left with questions. Why did he kill 22 men, and who were they? Did he really kill that many men? Why was his conviction overturned? Why was he found not guilty of the death of David Hall? Why was David Hall trying to kill him? Who was the steel man that was killed by Lewis Hall in McDowell County, West Virginia? Why did he kill George Stanley? Why did he attempt to kill Stancil? Was his version of the deaths of Samuel and Hiram still truthful? 
We leave these questions to you, our viewers and readers, to decide upon. A special thank you. We would love to thank Vicki McPeak Sackett for her tireless hours with me as we went back and forth about John Lewis Hall. Thank you for all of the information that you gave me that sent me down the path to find all that I could about him. We at Kentucky Tennessee Living would like to thank you for watching our video series on the Appalachian Outlaws. Don't forget to hit that like button as the more likes we receive, the more likely YouTube is to suggest our videos to other viewers. Also, to receive notice when we upload a new video, be sure to subscribe and click that bell for notifications. We thank you for continuing to support Kentucky Tennessee Living as we are discovering the mysteries of Appalachian history.